Alan, this is a this is a Trabant, right? Yes, it's a yeah. It, it's a and it's this is a very weird car. And you, if you know the show, you know I like weird cars. Yes, you do. <laughs> and this one, this one fits the bill. So I don't see many of these. Uh, it's a really old design. I, t I tend to think of these things from the mid '60s. They're really an East German before the wall came down car, right? Yes. But this is not a mid '60s car. No, no. This it's, is a. It's a 1987. But it looks like it looks like a '64. <laughs> yes, yes. This car was built from 64 to 91, and they just didn't change anything. Um, very minor things. It got 12 volt in the 1980s. They got three point harnesses in like 84. So overall, it's a it's it's a very primitive car. But again, it was built for the people over there. A, a, a primitive car built in 1987. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, the other thing, and I didn't know this. I didn't know that these things are not steel cars. No. They're no. also not fiberglass cars. No. What are they? Yeah, some people will say they're made out of cardboard, but that's not correct either. They're made out of duroplast, and duroplast is basically a wool fiber jacket that was ground up, the leftovers. They take that, they compress it with a resin and heat, and basically compress it to make the body panels that are then bonded to the light bit of steel that's on this car. So this is a composite body, if you will, but the composite is made from old wool coats. Wool coats and recycled pieces. So you could technically <laughs> call it the first green car if you can call a two-stroke car green. Green, right, exactly. So, I mean, everything, the hood, the top, the fin, it's all this dur duroplast? Duroplast, yeah. So fenders, hood, roof, you name it, they put it on there and light bit of steel to bond it all together. That is just, now is that stuff heavy or is it light? It's very, very light. So um, the whole car weighs in right around 1,300 pounds. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Would you need that though? Because it only makes 26 horsepower. <laughs> on a good day. <laughs> on a great day, yes. Well, and I bet, I bet these fog lamps add some weight to it. That probably cost you, you know, Probably at least a horsepower right there. Yeah, just... yeah, and those were actually an option for the car, depending on what trim level you got. This car is actually an S, but it has some deluxe features. Ooh. AKA, <laughs> I got fog lights, but an wow. S model, I got a radio, a radio antenna, and I got a cigarette lighter inside. Wow, okay. And so... some ashtrays, because you needed that. Is this, wait, is this the original color of the car? Yeah, this color is called papyrus white. Uh -huh. um, it's not really white. Some people refer to it as a tan color. But it is yes. really kind of a beige, you know? Yeah. yeah. Wow, but it's, uh, it, you know, it does have fabric that looks like, well, in fact, it still looks older than that. Yeah, but as you can see right here, we've got some 1970s interior. <laughs> um, and as I said before, too, if you got a deluxe model, you got headrests. I don't have headrests. But inside, we actually have the petcock to turn the fuel on. Oh, great. I have a radio, which uh -huh. makes me kind of special. Um, <laughs> but then I've also, I don't really have any other creature comforts. There's, How about the fuzzy dash tray? So that is part of the S package. Uh -huh. If you got a base model, you didn't get that package tray, no, oh. which is a great thing to have, yeah. Oh my goodness, this is just insane. Is that original fabric? That is original interior, um, all the way across, right down to the uh, wool-ish felt type material on the floor. Yep. Um, yeah, including the back seat. Doesn't even have seat belts back there because they never came with them. Is that the gas pedal that's over on the passenger yeah, side? Yeah, yeah, over in, <laughs> yeah, in the middle of the car. So the greatest part about that is if you got a passenger, I guess you got cruise control. Yeah, they, they can they, help you they, out a they little can bit. Handle it. <laughs> wow, and this is just too cool. I mean, and it's it's a uh, yeah. It even it even sounds kind of. It sounds yeah. It sounds extremely hollow. So. Um, as we were talking about, you can actually see up underneath, this is that duroplast material. Oh, right, right. But as you can see too, this trunk is very roomy. It that's is. A, that's a full size suitcase. So you and all your friends could pile in and get on over to wherever you're going. So th this was kind of, this was the only car for East Germans basically, they or pretty pr much? Pretty much. There was another car. If you were an executive or like a high ranking person, you could get a different car. But for the most of the masses, this was the car. And you waited up to 12 years to get a car. There's actually stories of people getting their first car and waiting and waiting, putting in for the second car, getting the second car 12 years later, but getting rid of the brand new car. And they would keep the first car because the second car was so valuable in the trade economy. Wow. <laughs> yeah. There's also stories of people using used cooking grease to wax the car Un to keep the car even in better shape too. Well, yeah. let's go see the massive power plant that moves us down the road. Yeah, let's go check that out.
as you can see as we open up this massive power plant here <laughs> we've got a two cylinder two stroke 600 cc's it's actually 598 if you want to get technical but it's an air cooled motor with a gas tank right on top. Par parallel twin? Parallel twin, making all of 27 horsepower. Wow. Single barrel carburetor coming down. And the greatest part is too, as I said, no fuel pump, no water pump, nothing really to go wrong. Super, super easy to use too. So it's air cooled, huh? It is air cooled. It is air cooled. It is air cooled. And you got this jacket's on there? Yes, yeah, so over there they have the jackets because it gets cold. They're more uh -huh. worried about that initial first start. Uh -huh. But people always ask, being here in Arizona, how does it do in the heat? Does great. I've, I'm I've run scared. the car at 110, 115 degree days outside, no problems. Wow. Guys have driven them all the way across Africa too. Jeez. And it, was there a heater? I mean, did it pipe any heat in like the so, V-dubs or not? So yeah, your heater is actually coming off of this expansion chamber. Oh, okay. Comes in here and there's three knobs on the inside to bring that heat inside. And it's a front wheel drive car. Front wheel drive car with a reverse leaf spring, both front and back. Oh, wow. <laughs> what a kick. Do people even know what this is? So I get a lot of comments. People think it's a rushing car. Uh -huh. They guess wrong. They think it's an Opal. They think it's, it's a, a Skoda. They think it's something else. Um, but no, they either they know what it is or they have no, they have no idea. idea. But the greatest part is they get educated and get to see it. And people dig it. People love it. It's kind of a happy car. You it know? is beyond a happy car. The amount of <laughs> smiles that you get just driving this around. I can't take it to the gas station without it being a 30 minute fill up. Well, well, plus, I mean, it's a two cycle, so you, you've got to mix anyway. Yep, I got to bring my oil with me and I bring a little container. But over in East Germany, they didn't have that problem. They the, could get pre mix right from the tank. 40 or 50 to 1? 30, 33 to 1? 33 or a, to 1. Or a 45 to 1. This being a later car, this wants 45 to 1. I see. Yeah. Gosh, cl close it back up. This thing's a kick. <laughs> when I saw it, I was like, oh, I got to meet this cat. Uh, <laughs> so. The most amazing thing to me about this car is that it's a 1987, because it sure don't look like it. No, it does not, no. <laughs> 1987 Trabant what? So this is a, what they call a 601. Trabant uh, 601. 601. S. 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 Alan, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Trabant, I love it.